It's been a while since I did a Q&A video, so I went ahead and asked you guys over on Instagram to ask me some questions, and now I'm gonna answer them. So the first question is, what is your favorite plant? So my favorite plant has to be my Birds of Paradise plant. This is a tropical plant that grows really, really large leaves, and it has the capability to grow as tall as eight feet and that is something I'm super excited for. Favorite thing about living alone? My favorite thing has to be being able to have your own big space to do whatever you want with it, to decorate it the way you want. You don't have anybody telling you how to do something or where to put something. You have the complete freedom to make it the way you want it to be. How tall are you? So I am five foot four. I think a lot of YouTubers often get mistaken for being taller than what they are because you only are seeing the torso up or either torso down. So you don't get to see the complete YouTuber usually. What's your favorite show right now? I don't tend to pick favorites, but a show that I currently just finished watching was This Is Us, and the last season had such a plot twist, and I can't wait for the next season. Easiest plant you've owned? So that would be snake plants. These are easily some of the easiest plants you can own. You simply can neglect them, and they will thrive off of that. They don't need a lot of water, and they also can be considered a low light plant. I preferably like to keep them in um, a south window because they do do better with a lot of light and they will end up growing uh, more if you have them in more light, but it's not a necessity. Imagine if I dropped both of these right now. Have you and MALG ever actually met in person? So no, unfortunately we haven't. This is because Emmy lives all the way out in the UK and I live in Canada. And to be able to see each other just a one way flight is extremely expensive. And we've also come to the idea that meeting each other probably would be terrible because we would eventually have to go back home and that would be heartbreaking, honestly. Are you gonna get a new cat soon? <laughs> So I don't plan on getting any more cats. I do love cats and last year I did have kitten fever. So I was researching a bit on how many cats is too many cats, which it's not a thing. <laughs> but somebody had mentioned a thing about having only as many cats as you have arms to carry. And I so I figured that two is probably my maximum. How old are all of your pets? So Sadie and JJ are actually around the same age. They're around two years old. And then we have Lola, whose age is very estimated. I got her back in 2016 and nobody knew her age, but she already was spayed. So that leads me to believe that she was at least a year old when I got her. So she could be anywhere from five years old to six years old. Cleo is four years old. Then we have Waddles, who when I adopted him, his previous owners had said he was eight months old. So if you do the math, Waddles is technically going to be a year old in November. Then we have Mabel, and she is already eight months old. And lastly, we have Dipper, who is 16 weeks old, which that would be almost four months. Do you like tortoises? Yes, I absolutely love tortoises. And honestly, if I had lived somewhere that was a, a consistent temperature, like summer all the time, I probably would have a tortoise in my backyard. How many hamsters have you owned in total? So this question was asked a lot and I figured I would answer it by going through all of the hamsters that I've had from the beginning to the ones I currently have. Hopefully I can do this. Okay, so it all started with Buddy, then there was Freddy, Pumpkin, Wasabi, Tofu, Peach, Pop-Tart, Petrie, Merlin, and then we had Ducky, Latte, Toffee, Sugar, 
spice, basil, coconut, maple, little bear, and then we had honey, tater tot, of course bumble, aspen, lenny, and now my current three, waddles, dipper, and mabel. Can't believe I did that. <laughs> Would you consider getting a dog in the future? Yes, I really, really do want to own a dog, but in my current position, I'm just not capable of that. Um, but one day when I have a house, I am 100% going to get the breed of dog that I want. Who is more vocal, Sadie or JJ? Lee, leave in the comments before I say, who, who do you think is more vocal? It's Sadie. <laughs> So this is a good question. Why do you provide Mabel with a bigger cage than Dipper if they are both Syrians? So it is true, Syrians need a lot of space, but there can be slight differences between male, female. Not always the case, of course, but from my experience and many others' experience, female Syrian hamsters need very, very large enclosures. They can be super hard to please. Of course, a male steering can be like this, but on average, it's usually the females that tend to be super, super hyper and they are never happy. In fact, one of the most commonly asked questions is usually somebody saying something like, what do I do? My hamster isn't happy in their enclosure. They are trying to escape. And uh, the first thing that comes to my head is they have a female Syrian hamster. So I ask, do you have a female Syrian hamster? And the response is yes. Why did you stop using the IKEA Detoff? So I didn't stop using the IKEA Detoff because it's a bad cage or it's unsafe or anything like that. I stopped using it because the, my hamster at the time, Bumble, just was not happy in the Detoff anymore. She was showing signs of boredom, so it was time that she got an upgraded enclosure to something larger and something that was going to be taller as well as wider, which the Detoff unfortunately doesn't provide that much. What's your favorite object in your room? So this is something really, really small in my room that I have on display, but it is one of my favorites. This was made by my friend Zoe, and this is an art, a little art print. I don't know how she made it, but it's of two cats, and one is black and one is white, and it just reminds me of JJ and Sadie, and I just, I love it so much. What is your favorite part of being a pet owner? My favorite part just has to be seeing my pets happy. Like when I give a hamster a new cage set up or something new in their enclosure and they're exploring it and they're using it, that just brings me so much joy. Where did you get your gate for the pet room? So that is a baby gate from Walmart. I did have to make some slight adjustments. I had to add some metal poles in between so the rabbits couldn't fit through it. And it used to have mesh in the center. I had to cut that out and replace it with this white material <laughs> because the rabbits would grab the mesh and pull back on the gate. Biggest pet peeve. So this one is related to YouTube and that is when somebody asks me to get the same species of pet they have so that I can tell them how to care for their pet. I get pets because I love the species and I have researched how to care for them. I don't get pets for views. I don't get pets for videos. <laughs> if you get a pet, it is your responsibility to do the research on how to care for them properly. That is, that's not up to me to do for you. Are you naturally ginger? <laughs> yes, I am since birth and I have never really ever colored my hair besides doing highlights because I, I just, I like my color. And the last question is, what's the hardest thing about being a YouTuber? There are, there's a lot of things. <laughs> I think a lot of people think being a YouTuber is just this really easy thing. You film a video and upload it and then like that's it. There's so much more that goes into it and there's a lot of things that can severely affect you. 
being in the public eye is horrible sometimes. And of course, that is something like, if you're a YouTuber, you choose to be in the public eye. But one of the hardest things is a being put on a pedestal. I don't think any human should ever be put on a pedestal and thought of as the greatest human in the world. I will get comments where they're like, I think you're the best person ever. You're such an amazing person. And while I say thank you, I'm also like, I'm not. I'm not the greatest person in the world. I know I have flaws. I know I make mistakes. So I, I don't think I deserve to be put on some other type of level because I'm the same as everybody else. <laughs> and when somebody is put on a, a pedestal, as soon as they do make a mistake, it is the biggest thing in the world and everybody hates them when making mistakes is a human thing. So I don't think being put on a pedestal is healthy for anybody. I feel like that got really serious. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.